Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Geek Out Podcast, where we talk about everything that has to do with geek and give you our two cents. I'm your host, Brogan, and I am joined with... Gavin. And Alex. Yep, the three amigos, the three the three compadres, whatever you want to call us, we're back and we're talking geek. So let's do it, shall we? I didn't know I was your friend. Mm-hmm. We're all friends here. I we're think all so. friends. It's a friend friend fave. To start us off, I figured I'd take us back to something that uh, has has we've talked about recently, but uh, I man, it just it keeps coming up. So it's something we got to talk about again. Google Stadia. Why? Why are we game. talking about the it again? Platform. We're talking about Google Stadia Switching again because. NVIDIA GeForce just launched, I believe it was called GeForce Now, um, which is their own streaming service, which is infinitely better than Google Stadia. Any game that you already own in, I believe it's your Steam library and Epic library and basically any of the launchers you have on your PC, you will have access to through the GeForce Now. And this is another like cloud based. So this is another cloud. This this is GeForce's cloud gaming service, right? So if you own something on PC, you know you do not have to buy it separately, right? So already a huge step up from from Google Stadia. At the same time, right? So Google wants you to pay sixty dollars for every game, and they want to charge you twenty. I think it's twenty twenty five dollars a month to use their service. GeForce is like, hey. Keep your PC games. You already bought them. Play them wherever you want. And we're only going to charge you $5 a month. A fifth of the price. So what is the free tier for the Google Stadia then? Because uh, I was just reading an article today, and they announced it, at least, that they have a free tier. The free tier is uh, you are locked at 1080p, 30 frames a second, I believe. You cannot get do any gaming in 4K. And I would assume you'd still have to pay the $60 And you still have to pay for $60 for all your games. But, but yeah, you're, you are locked at 1080p, uh, 30 frames per second, I believe. I believe that's, that's how I understood it. And, and still then, out of the 10 games Google has. Or right, whatever, right, right. And then if you pay the premium, you, you, it, it upscaled. It wasn't even like native 4K. It upscaled your content to 4K. Uh, so how do you need that if you're like gaming on a phone or something though? Well, like, that's the question. <laughs> that's the real question. Uh, the whole business model around Google Stadia, I just, it just didn't make any sense. It made no sense. So now it makes even less sense. So now it makes even less sense, and they're they're shaking in their boots, metaphorically, and I imagine literally shaking in their boots because now all of a sudden GeForce is like, hey, you know that Stadia? Screw them. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna do what they're doing, but we're gonna we're gonna do it for real. I think that's a, a really smart marketing move for Nvidia because yeah. now they're like you know Google that brand that everybody knows and yep. is like the lead director of the world. Yep, we're better. Yeah. So Google Stadia has already been out for like three or four months. I didn't even know it was out. I oh, thought, yeah. I oh, thought yeah, nobody we, did. It just kind of <laughs> happened. I thought we were just pooping on it as a concept because I, I, they actually released it. They, as it actually launched back in November. That is that is literally butt cheek on a stick, brother. Mm-hmm. And all already, already in less than a week of, of launching, like this actual, I believe it's only it's only in beta mode. So the the Nvidia GeForce one is not official yet. It's still in beta mode, but it already runs better than Google Stadia does on most platforms. <laughs> it's just a joke. Crazy. That's bad. It's just such a joke. I wonder what the reasons that like Nvidia is so much better at it though. Do you think it's just more familiarity with like, I, the, oh, like, absolutely. the types of like absolutely hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred and ten percent? Because I mean, Google's amazing with servers and everything, right? Like, yeah. Google's the king of servers across the world. Yeah. They own like forty percent of all servers in the world, or something crazy, right? Like it, it, that is true. But they they have not had they haven't done a lot with with gaming. Right. Uh, with, with a gaming streaming service and having people play games off their servers and whatnot, that's nothing they've ever messed around with. So, they may have some some pretty powerful servers, but uh, there's a really big difference in streaming like a video and streaming a video game. A huge difference. And so I feel like that is probably one of the major reasons that GeForce is doing so well is because they're like, hey, we we know what we're doing. Like, we we've been around the. We've been around the gaming block a few times, so. 
Not to mention, it's only gonna it's only gonna cost you sixty dollars a year, which is the same as what you'd pay for, for a game, the Xbox Live, yeah, right, for a year, or, less or, than you pay for a full wow or anything, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, less, than, okay. yeah, even less than a WoW subscription. That's less than point. playing for OSRS as well, old school RuneScape. So ten month. Interesting. I had no idea. So even though my Steam library is not huge. I, it's still like a tempting proposition, you know. Like I'm still tempted to be like, man, I could I could play my games on the go. I could play my Rainbow. Roblox on, oh, on, yeah. the, on the train. Like uh, that that's Roblox pretty tempting. Bible going. Yeah, I could play my Fortnite. No, I I, I <laughs> I've crossed the line. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fortnite, I've the line. Fortnite was already free and already mobile. So uh, that's, true. that's true. That's tr- how how well did the mobile one actually do though? It when they did really well. Because remember, there was I PUBG. There was PUBG on. Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> and PUBG Mobile was great for being, you know, initially a PC game, yes. but then I got pissed off, and so did a bunch of the community when we found out that the only reason why we were winning so much is because like ninety percent of the player base was actually just bots. That's true. Are you serious? Most yeah. online games you play, though. Yeah. Like, no Overwatch, way. most of the time you're playing against bots. Yeah. Are you... With, whoa, hold but, on. Yeah, with, it's blowing my but mind with right Fortnite, now. Fortnite, Are you serious? It, Fortnite, it wasn't. Yeah. So with PUBG, the, and, and then they launched a defense. They were like, the the more you play, the less bots you have. It's just to help beginner players. Hold on. So the, it was just like auto-populating gamer tags and making it seem like you were Yeah, and that's why I was like, this guy's really bad. Maybe it's just because he's playing on his phone. And I was like... No, I won. I won, my first six games of PUBG Mobile. I won all of them. Wow! And I was like, something ain't right. I, I'm good, I but mean, I, I guess it makes that sense to good. do that for the first little while to get. Yeah, you, like, exactly. And so then I was, and then I became less mad. But then, like lo and behold, it was like a lie. And then huh. still, when you, yeah. So then I dropped it. Fortnite Mobile came out, uh, very clean. Uh, it wasn't like you know. PUBG is still buggy already on PC, yeah. on Xbox, on PlayStation, and of course on mobile. But Fortnite's not buggy, and it was not buggy on PC, on mobile. And the thing is, too, now is that, uh, like, you know, Fortnite's like one of the biggest esports games of all time. Like, yes. So there's actual esports for the mobile version. Like, no kidding. Yeah, it's that makes sense. Well, I guess You'd if you can have Pokemon it. Go esports tournaments, then you can have Fortnite mobile tournaments. Yeah. So uh, it's just it's just crazy. And people have like rigs for it and everything. They'll like it'll have like this, I I can't even say it's like mobile That's gaming insane. when you have like this rig that like was literally just you like plugging all this stuff. Save a controller. Like, is that really <laughs> even mobile gaming at that point? It's just more like it's it's more like it's it's like like going on to an Xbox account and ho- hooking up your uh, mouse and keyboard. It's like, you know, come I, on. I can say from experience, though, uh, working in electronics retail, that we have had a, a massive spike in the amount of people that are coming in looking for the uh, phone adapters that let you have like thumbsticks uh, for your phone while you're phone mobile gaming. Oh, yeah. How much of gaming is mobile gaming? Isn't I, it I over would, 50%? I would say it's over, yeah. It's, it's supposed to be a lot. It's, it is a lot, but most of it is going to be, you know... Angry Birds while Flash you're on Royale, the camp. Candy Crush. But I think the big thing is, like, those are the places where the money gets made, right? Oh, absolutely. And ultimately, yeah. we're a capitalist country. Like, that's where the money's going to go. I think when you say right? gaming in general, yeah, it's, gonna, it's probably going to be at least half... Um, but f- like com- real competitive gaming, y- you know, we're we're talking like triple A ga- competitive gaming is is absolutely going to be PC. I don't know. And Raid Wars. Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys can use my code for Raid Shadow. Legends. <laughs> Let's play Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> but join now for this free. broadcast. Bra- not brought to you by. Raid but yeah, I mean the the thing is is like. I mean, like, I, I'm not, like, as a gamer, I don't want to shit on, like, casual gamers. Because, like, the people that just, like, you know, whip out, like, Angry Birds while they're on the can, like, that's, they are technically gamers at that point. Statistically, they put themselves in the in the pool of casual gamer. I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit here because um, it's those casual gamers that I like to call the cash whales or the cash cows that oh. don't know any better. 
and they, you know, they'll they'll they're the ones that were spending like a hundred fifty dollars on Farmville back in the day. They're the ones that are dropping a hundred dollars to skip a couple levels of Candy Crush. They don't care, you know, like they don't know any better. They don't know what they're doing, and you know, you got all these these high up corporations are like, hey, hey, give me your money, and then it's like, mm, well, we did you should mobile. Let's do it in all our all other games. I will say a lot of mobile producers often don't make. Games that fall onto other platforms. No, they don't. It's more like, and it's because they wouldn't fly on other platforms. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you have these, you have these technicians that can make these, or these designers, or whatever that can make the developers. That's the correct I like term. The technicians one. Yeah, we thank you. Have Sorry. you seen? Have you seen the YouTube video of the conference that they had where the guy was like giving a pitch to all these people about how to monetize games? It was the most depressing thing I've ever witnessed. I wanted to kill myself after watching this 15-minute video. I gotta watch it now. Uh, it, he he talks. He like goes on about like. He's like, if you really want to make the most money from your game, like this is exactly what to do. And he starts talking about how you can like manipulate the player and make them feel like they're doing really well, and then take it all away from them and be like, but you could be doing better if you had this, you know, and, and nudge them in the, you know, nudge them towards like, yeah, you really want this and like try to try to monet, you know, or put them against like a bunch of players that are a lot better than them, but make sure that they know exactly what gear these people are using, you know, like, yeah, it's oh, like, so, like the, so, oh, you know, that reminds me of early day, uh, early day uh, monetization like remember I think it was the first Black Ops where they had the Peacekeeper it was again exclusive to DLC it came with the map pack it sounds and, familiar and I think, yeah, I think it was an SMG assault rifle but literally had the fire rate of an SMG so super fast but then the damage was incredibly high the recoil was incredibly low and they had the range in an assault rifle which in Call of Duty is basically the best thing you can have and so this thing was literally just lethal to anyone so you know everyone was using Uh, it because it was the best gun it is probably still the best gun in the game yeah oh yeah but like then people stopped using it because they were like wow this is really unfair to other players like even when i bought the battle pass not the battle pass the map pack <laughs> we're just in that mindset these days <laughs> we it's are i i know we, when passes. i bought the when i bought the map pack i was like wow this maps are so awesome but then i just i was like oh, i really don't want to use it but sometimes when this when i'm going against noob killer 69694204 yeah <laughs> and he cool. keeps killing me with the peacekeeper mm-hmm. sometimes you got to whip it out <laughs> The Peacekeeper, of course. It's so weird that, like, multiple guns with the same name are in different, like, genres that are totally different. Different, the Peacekeeper, peacekeeper, and the shotgun. And it's like a revolver thing that you hold down for half a second before it fires. The Peacekeeper in Apex is the shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing is, like, yeah, if you come up with, like, all these cool names, like, like... this, it's, it's ironic to call it, uh, like a gun a peacekeeper because it's like maybe it, it's real know. and like all of those are just called peacekeepers like casually or something I mean yeah, uh, you can only from. have so many uh, Mustang and Sally's you know yeah. you just gotta start getting really edgy demon killer demon baby killer baby killer, <laughs> baby killer. <laughs> god damn <laughs> edgy your name's the better yeah Gavin what do you got for us today so what I got for us today I, I don't know if you heard but this is talking about Disney. They, oh boy, this ought to be good. So there's a new live action coming out. Do you know which one it is? Uh, Mandalorian two. No, it is Lilo and Stitch live action. Live action? Jesus, that's a horror movie. I I, I don't know. That's terrible like idea. Kind of cool actually. No, stop it, Brogan. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Keep, I, okay. Okay. Just, okay. Imagine. Go ahead and give, okay. Give your so, opinion. do you remember what Lilo looks like? This cute, adorable little girl yeah, with like, she was, like really sausage stubby. fingers and like yeah, really really and like a big ass nose. So like, imagine that, and they're trying to live cast that. So they they tr- they really tried to. They need the elephant man. They yeah. tried to, to to recreate the little stubby girl. Well, maybe I don't know if they're gonna try and recreate her. They just announced they're gonna be a live action, so they might That's cast someone. But it's either it's either gonna be so far away from Lulu and Stitch that I won't even like it, or they're gonna have to CGI. Like, I, that's the thing. It's well, like I, CGI I, the hell out of it. They well, have they have to. to. I'm it's just talking about. I'm talking about Lilo. Like Lilo, yeah. like she is one of the most adorable and great characters in all of Disney. That's true. I will defend that tooth and nail because Lilo is great. <laughs> but yeah, I'll defend that tooth and nail. And so, like, like let's be honest. When we first saw the Pokemon Go trailer with Mister Mime, like, the you know how Detective Pikachu, Detective trailer? Pikachu. Okay. What did I say? What did Pokemon I say? Pokemon Go. 
Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. So basically the same thing at this point. <laughs> so Detective Pikachu, like, all those creatures made me feel so, so uncomfortable. <laughs> I literally it was so grossed out. So imagine that with Lilo. I, think they, I uh, feel like they did that on purpose, though. Like, they, 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 they had to, weird. but yeah. it, br- it drew in an audience. Yeah, I did. Oh, but I now, it pretty well. I, I, I didn't see it because I wanted to, but I couldn't. Well, I had classes every Tuesday, and I like to see movies on Tuesday for $5 for Tuesday. Cheap. Yeah. $5 Tuesday. But, um, so... <sighs> Imagine, imagine that kind of concept with Lilo, or sorry, not with Lilo, but with Stitch. That sounds terrifying. And Jumba, uh, Plankly, I can't believe I remember all these guys. Yeah, oh my I, god! I, like, <laughs> I can't remember. Plankly, big Lilo. I was like the big fat I, alien guy, yeah, the skinny the, the, one-eyed alien. Yeah. Guy. <laughs> like, and then there's the whatever the other bad guy is. But like, yeah, god, he's I, like the shark looking. Dude. Yeah, they, yeah the, I can't remember his name. Yeah, so Wumbo or something. It's like it's know. like Gr- Grumbo or something. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna look at Grum- just Grumbista. I, I wonder how close I am. Uh, but anyways, what are, what are your thoughts? Because like like it's live action, and I I hate the live action category. I think no live action has really done the originals any justice. Well, and I, I just it's all I mean like a copyright I, grab, right? Like, yeah, it's just a cash grab. It's just a cash. I don't grab. think it's a cash grab. I think they have to keep making this content to keep the copyright. And they don't want to make it too obvious that that's what they're doing, so they're just redoing everything. Oh, that's probably like, smart. Well, I don't know. Disney keeps renewing how long the copyright thing can be, yeah? Is right. that is not the thing for it is a whole d- uh, Mickey that Mouse? That's a whole, yeah, that's a whole other debate right now. Yeah. Government, but, and this is the year that that is like coming up to grabs to you. Like, Mickey Mouse's copyright, I think, expires. I heard, I heard it was 2023. I was actually really? talking about the other well, they keep, I think it's 2023 they, when it they expires. They keep renewing it or whatever. Uh, it's Captain Gontu. So I knew it started with a G. Okay. Gontu. That wasn't that far away. Gordo or whatever. <laughs> Something. Gontu, Gordo. Oh, Cobra <laughs> Bubbles. Who would they cat? That's got to be Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Remember? Oh. <laughs> Wait, yeah. wait, who, wait! Who was that? He's the he's the protective services guy. It ends up being like secret FBI agent. Yeah. Okay. I wonder what they're gonna do for the the big fat guy that's always on the beach with like two ice cream cones. You know what I'm talking? Oh about? yeah. Who like never says anything, but he's always just there to get he's messed just up. Losing <laughs> his ice cream. Yeah, I know. That exactly. should be Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> that should be <laughs> fat Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Could be fat Thor. Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson in a fat suit with two yeah. ice cream cones. Just standing no. They shouldn't make him on. get fat for the movie. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they did it to, uh, they did it for Thor. <laughs> yeah, well, he had a fat suit on. Was it a fat suit? Well, I, I imagine it was. Yeah, could you not see the abs underneath the fat suit? <laughs> no. Yeah, like literally, if you look at the fat suit, it was like fat suit and then like moves, and then there was like pecs, like yeah. right here. And I was like, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't paying too much attention to that part. Of, of course, you were looking at the Fortnite screen, weren't you? Uh huh. Yeah, I know you. Yep. You got me. You caught me right. I was too busy looking at the rock guy, whatever his name is. Uh, yeah. I don't think that's his name. I don't know, but I know that they're they're doing something with this character. He's getting like his own. Oh yeah, right. Disney Plus show, I think. I, you know, the, with the whole Disney live action thing, honestly, my issue with it is it feels like it's just so oversaturated. If they staggered them a bit more, it might be cooler. Yeah, and they're the, coming out. They're popping them out so frequently. It's like. And have they lost money on any of them yet? I don't, uh, think, I don't think Disney's lost money on anything for a long time. They lost money on something Star recently. Star Wars Battlefront 2? <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you do Doolittle? That's a good question. Doolittle, Doolittle was a bad... A it was a net loss. I, I think it, it was. Yeah, it was a big net loss. It was like one of the no worst... Way. Oh, yeah. It did terrible. Oh, interesting. I figured Robert Downey Jr. Right? I know he, he draws in. So millions they they talked sometimes. about it. So a lot of people like reviewers were like, "Great cast, great like idea," but like it just it just did so little. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah, interesting. I wouldn't have would not have expected that. <laughs> do little to do so little. Yeah. Then again, anything anything within the first couple months of the year usually is pretty rough because everyone's still burnt out from Christmas. Yeah. So nobody wants to do anything. Yeah, That's no. why you never see any good video games getting released until like May. It's true. Perfect world pictures. I don't know Perfect that world is. pictures. 
It's probably at least published by Disney. But, well, yeah, well, there's another thing that's kind of crazy, too, is because of all these live actions that Disney's busting out, we're seeing a lot of other, like, people following suit. Like, there's a Cowboy Bebop live action being no. produced. Have you not heard of this? No. How do you think I feel? I've like, seen, like, two episodes of Cowboy Bebop, and that still offends me. It, I, it's, a, it's one of the best animes of all time. Oh, my God. And they're making a live action. But the cast looks promising. I mean, let's and not I have, get started I have with faith. the Sonic debacle. Hey. That could still be good. I'm watching it Probably on Valentine's Day, it. so... Yeah, at least it comes out Valentine's Day, you know that, yeah? Wait, really? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Why do you think I'm going to be going to the movies, like, like, like Sonic fast? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Gotta go> fast. <laughs> <laughs> I won't lie, I'm actually pretty excited for the Mulan live action, though. Ugh. Mulan was always one of my favorite Disney movies. The songs mm. in that are kind of tough. And it too. looks pretty good. It doesn't have a dragon. That's true, and it sucks. He's cutting that out. Well, totally. Mush- yeah, completely. Mushu is, Mushu's they, gone. They made him something else. I don't think he's completely no, gone. No, he's completely this. gone. Is he they're, completely gone? Yeah, the, in, instead of being the plot that was the original Mulan, uh, what they're doing is they are actually going to keep it pretty close to the actual like original story, yeah. uh, which Disney, of course, it shifted. Was, that is true. It was based on a... That'll actually be interesting copyright-wise, because they're not technically redoing the same story anymore. So it wouldn't be reusing that intellectual property. Well, you got to remember how much controversy this Mulan movie made, right? Like this Szechuan sauce. Szechuan sauce. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he's, he's, he's completely gone. At all. Yeah. Or the lucky cricket? Come on. What? Come yeah. on. No, you can get rid of the dragon, but not the lucky cricket. But yeah, so uh, yeah. No, this this Mulan raised a ton of controversy because like the cast, the original, the ori- I don't know if they recast it, but the original Mulan character was a, ca- a Caucasian person. I don't remember who it was for the live action. For the live action, well, were, well, and so you know, a bunch of Asian Americans or Asians were just flipping out because I would. yeah, well, it's whitewashing. It's literally <laughs> whitewashing at its finest. Yeah, and which Disney's notorious for, right? I'd be offended um, by that too. Yeah, so a lot of people were offended, and so I think also in addition to the recast, I I, ho- I pray they recast it so it's not just a Caucasian actress, because that's a big slap in the face of the Asian community. But then it, I'm pretty sure they, instead of doing the traditional same remake of the Mulan movie, I'm pretty sure they uh, went back to the actual roots of Mulan to uh, help appease that kind of a group that they kind of took a big fat deuce on. Well, if, if one thing I know for sure... Uh, Disney hates backlash. Disney hates it when the fans are, are like, you know, giving them backlash because it just makes Disney look terrible and they hate it. It's the same reason why um, when Star Wars Battlefront 2 was getting all the backlash for their, like, filthy monetization and stuff, at first, w- like, nothing really changed. But as soon as people started reaching out to Disney and saying, hey... EA is under your belt right now, and this game is technically on you. It was shut down so fast; those microtransactions were gone. And it's what's crazy. Disney hates okay. backlash. Okay, and yeah, so we should point out that they have switched the main character for the live-action Mulan. It is now Yifei Louis, probably pronounced horribly Hold wrong. On. Let me see. This. But it's a Chinese actress. I speak Chinese. I'll Crystal. Do it. I'll do it some justice. Crystal oh, yeah. Louis. Ife the- Loy. Sure. Nope, nope, nope. If well technically it'd be Liu Ife. Yeah, Liu Ife. There we go. This, this is this is why we have him here. Yeah. Now give me the Japanese and I'll I'll read you some it's Japanese. Probably, it's probably the same. I do I do like that they got uh, a, a Chinese actress to play the Well, it would, be, it would it be it would be it would be it, disrespectful. It, it went it was I I can't believe you guys didn't even hear about it because everyone was freaking out about it. Was it some or something? I think it was the. It was like Emma. It was like Emma. The Mockingbird chick. Yeah, was it Emma Stone? I, I, it, was, it wasn't Emma Stone. It was either... Emma Stone, that would be weird. I thought it was like the Mockingbird I think Hunger he, Games. Yeah, I think you might be right. I can't remember. But anyways, it was it was a big... It was a big actress... A big actress... Big named actress. Uh-huh. And so that's why everyone was like... Disney, like... Seriously? Like... This topic is getting me uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't want to get Jennifer shut down. Lawrence? Is that who, yeah. they, who they got to do it before? That's I think so. Oh. But I, I don't remember. It was either her or was like one of the Emma... Whatever's. Emma I, yeah. Not Emma Stone. Yeah. Not, the, not that That's babe. I think. 
There's like three other Emmas. But There's anyway. so many famous Emmas, it's hard to keep track. Yeah. But so yeah, anyways, that's what I want to talk about is live actions. Are yeah. are they okay? Because I I'm pretty sure they're just a cash grab. You think they're just a uh, whatever grab? You said. I mean, I'm sure they're a cash grab as well. I'm sure they like calculate it and figure uh, out the profits. But I think a lot of it is to argue for copyright. The copyright. That's right. I think they're okay. More than anything in in this day and age, I think they just show a lack of creativity. Uh, People aren't coming out with really great original ideas anymore, but they're like, hey, you know what sells these things? Let's remake them. Yeah, well, like, there's been so many, like, renewed on, like, recycled concepts or, like, Mm -hmm. recycled movies, like, recently. And then I think the live action is just putting, like, a a dookie cherry on top. And then, like, let's, let's be honest, like, The Lion King, can you even call that? live action well we're right now we're in a period of the, the period of remakes before that it was superheroes before that it was zombies you know we go through we go through these phases of, of media where you know some some trend catches on and then like all the films and the games and everything for a period of time have to have to do with this stuff I mean you look at the gaming industry it's the same way oh yeah we're definitely getting all of like the Resident Evil remakes now and like yeah and I'm not buying them Lizards remaking everything yep <laughs> Yep, it's. I mean, that's that's the thing right now. That is the trend right now is remaking old like nineteen nineties, early two thousand stuff. That's the big trend. Right yeah, now, so. it's like like South Park. They caught it. They were like the member berries. Did you guys ever see that? Mm-mm. Uh, the whole like the whole season has these things. There's like, like especially with like Trump's like election. They were like make America great again. It's like playing on your nostalgia, right? And so they were right. like, like you eat these berries that are like grapes and it's like, oh, you remember Chewbacca? <laughs> yeah, I remember Chewbacca. And then he's like eating, he's like, yeah, I remember Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> like all happy, nostalgic. And then they're like, a new Star Wars movie? That sounds like a great idea. I remember Chewbacca. Oh my like, gosh. And then lo and behold, we get it. And then that's another dookie on dookie on us. I think that's one reason that the 90s and 2000s were so good. Everything about it was so good because like everything felt original. Yeah. You know, like there were so many brand new ideas. I mean, it there it was a period where a lot of new technology was coming out as well. So people True. were able to do things they'd never been able to do before. Um, we, we've kind of plateaued a little bit. We're still progressing pretty quickly, but as far as, um, you know, filmmaking and game making and stuff, we, we have kind of plateaued. I feel like from about 1995, six to 2010, technology was just increasing like so crazy that people were just like, let's, let's just like push the boundaries. And so we got some crazy stuff. I feel like it's a little different with gaming though, right? Because gaming is kind of an interesting yeah. dynamic where it's a lot of the like triple A titles mm-hmm. that are kind of doing what you're talking about, yeah. right? Like going for the easy money. Then indie games kind of hit, hit all different sort of levels, you know? That is true. Well, I mean, some real hidden gems too. Yeah, I mean, that being said, the movie industry kind of has that too. It's like indie mm-hmm. films, like Studio A24 has been producing a lot of stuff that are like the new indie film company. I love Studio A24. Great yeah, films. Never even heard of them they're they're fantastic. You've they prob- you've honestly probably seen one of their films and just didn't even know it. Oh, maybe yeah, so. like the Swiss Army Man was oh, uh that was like the big one that took over uh He's done quite a few things recently. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. Uh, hereditary. Uh, oh, that's it. Yeah, Hereditary. There was the, I wanted there, to see Midsummer. Did they yeah, do that they, they well? did that as well. Yeah, uh, the they did what Uncut film. Gems. Oh, have you seen it? Oh, and gosh, it was such a weird movie. <laughs> Is it kind of hereditary? It, yeah, it was. It was very. It was very hereditary in nature. It was. It was just very psychological. And you're just okay. Like, that's kind of what I was Why? hoping for. Yeah. <laughs> what am I Perfect. watching? Why is <laughs> yeah. this? So they, like I said, they produce like that's high quality. Like like really really good yeah. filmmaking right and like cause I mean they've shown like a breadth they have horror like locked down like I, it depends I mean uh, do you guys like Hereditary did you oh, thought I it was scary I mean it was one of the best I, I mean I would call it I would say I didn't like it but it was an amazingly well done and like really good movie but like I mean, I, I, I didn't particularly enjoy it, right? Like, I loved watching it as an experience. But I think I think one reason I did enjoy that movie so much is that it wasn't following those same tropes. Like, it was really authentic. Yeah. And I loved it. Yeah. I, also, it was entirely 100% filmed in Utah. So it was. That's, oh, that's wow. always a plus. Yeah. Yeah. And the actress, Salt Lake she's, City and Park City. The, the, the girl, the female actress, the main little girl, she's, like, uh, English. Oh, really? I watched an yeah. interview with her, and her talking was, like, the, the threw mom me th- or the young girl? The, the girl. 
She's British? British or wow, English or whatever. Yeah, and so she had, like, a total... I was, like, not expecting this strong... Because, I mean, think about that. Uh-huh. Like, being able to have an American accent, like... British people are a lot better at doing American accents than Americans are at doing British accents. I, I would absolutely agree. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. You got the like Geordie accent the and the America. Welsh accent. Yeah, you got them all. You got them all. Well, to be fair, there's quite a lot of American accents, too. I, don't, I think there's Southern, more English accents. Than New York. Howdy, this, l- this lady came in the other day. Strongest, like, Brooklyn's accent I've ever heard. <laughs> I literally, like, my coworker's like, I don't know what she's saying. I was like, <laughs> okay, let me see. And she's like, white rice. I was like... What? <laughs> why, why rats? <laughs> no, to be fair, though, I think what most of them default to is, like, the Valley Girl accent. Just, For... like, just like the California Girl. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. The standard, basic yeah. California Girl, Valley Girl accent. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what most people think of. I love the Utah accent. The, like, neutral with just some weird shit with the was, G's. Yeah. So Ma- mountains. Crick. And you go, ah, good name, mountains. No, we don't really sound like that. Crick, <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> you gonna wander down the crick. <laughs> my fiance's dad, he says crick. So we live by every time I just want to like smile. I'm like, what's that river that runs through Bountiful? He's like, oh, Mill Crick. I'm like, ew, no, not Mill Crick. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, yeah, <laughs> that one. <laughs> what was it called again? <laughs> oh gosh, no. He's <laughs> and, and there, or like he'll be telling us a story when he's young. He's like, yeah, we were just throwing rocks down by the crick. I'm like, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh gosh! It's like making a British guy say "bag" <laughs> or uh, aluminium. <laughs> I remember because my uh, my mom's side of the family is all British, uh, and I remember trying to trying to teach my cousin how to say "car" the American way, and it it took like two hours trying. Well, like, how did they pronounce it? Pr- pronounce the hard R because it's "car," right? Yeah. Uh, so trying to trying to teach him how to like you know like enunciate the hard R was like so hard for him to do like he's like it just sounds gross it sounds disgusting I can't do it that's it's so kind funny of, it's kind of funny that's so funny anyways uh, yeah <laughs> so interesting tangent yeah I, I, it, it is it is but uh, yeah so I guess that's how we feel about live action so in total the between us don't really like them but nah. I guess we keep watching them I'm pretty new I will I will watch that Cowboy Bebop live action when it comes out well I have high hopes it's a good cast I just mm-hmm. But then just, we have just take some, yeah, take but some the, cyanide. There's with been you. some bad precedent for anime live action. I was gonna say I was gonna say like anime live Note. actions though are different from Disney live actions. Like Death Note or Tokyo Ghoul. Like it's Neither of which I've seen bad. a single episode of for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just watched like the trailer and like literally like I was like covered in my vomit by the end of it because I, I was you'd want to do Tokyo Ghoul live action. I, I don't know. So much gore. Mm. Well, it's Everything like it's like, like, and the thing is too, is it's like, like the CGI they do, is so bad, it's so bad. It literally looks like a 1960s like horror movie, mm-hmm. and not the good kind. Like literally, where you see them like spraying ketchup bottles on the, um, oh on gosh. yeah, it's it's so bloody bad. All right, Alex, we got to get off this topic. It's it, I'm starting to feel depressed. Okay, give us uh, something new to talk about. Please. Yeah, so I have a couple. So real quick, I just want to touch back up on the Warcraft three talk huh. we had last time. Oh yeah, that's still going. Uh, yeah. So Blizzard at least decided to give some people refunds. So yeah, that's they the did. big thing I've heard. That they're, is true. They from what I understand, cave. they're like being really good about it. They're not like contesting it too much anymore. If you ask for it, they'll just give it to you right away. From what I've read, anyways, that's how it is now. They were fighting people tooth and nail at first. Um, that being said, I've played a good amount of Warcraft 3 in the past week. Uh, Reforged been, or original? So the whole game has been updated. You can purchase the upgrade to like get the Reforged packs oh, or whatever. Oh, so it's, and it's, skins basically and like, it's basically a patch for the original? Right, yeah. Oh, so like all the UI got and changed I did and everything. I realize like, that. Okay. Yeah, the way they're doing like usernames and stuff is different now where like they can use wow. repeat usernames and everything, but... Um, overall, it honestly just seems like it's mostly a UI change. Mm, okay. Like, actually connecting to people feels almost identical to before they did the patch and everything, because uh, I was playing it a couple weeks ago as well before the patch. Um, <laughs> plenty of disconnects and everything, you know? Like, <laughs> if you enjoyed playing the classic Warcraft 3, you wouldn't dis-enjoy, you know, you wouldn't dislike playing this re- reforged version, but 
it, it seems to be basically just a reskinned version of the classic game, and that's literally yeah. it. Nothing framework wise really appears to have been even, done. even the cutscenes. That's the big one that people have been salty about is the cutscenes are just they're just reskinned. Yeah, and I haven't played the campaign, so I don't even know on, <laughs> on that front. But right, well. I just play the custom games. So custom games experience wise, it's not too terrible, but it's definitely not an improvement over what it used to be, so that's <laughs> I pretty I saw a really funny review where, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure it was IGN that did this review. It was IGN's video review, and the entire time, the, the, the guy doing the review was like, well, I mean, Reforged isn't so great. Like, it's, it, it's really not that great of a port, but Warcraft 3 was so good in its heyday. <laughs> And, like, everybody's like, okay, you are reviewing Reforged. You are not reviewing Warcraft 3 20 years later. You are reviewing Reforged. And he gives it, like, a 7 out of 10. <laughs> and people are like, okay, like, and, and even, in, even in his, like, conclusion, right, his conclusion was like, yeah, Reforged isn't really, uh, it's not really a great remaster. It doesn't hold up very well to a lot of games these days. But Warcraft 3 was so good in its heyday that I just can't give it a bad sc- Like It was just so stupid. That's it was so bad. Dumb. I'm sorry. And so everybody like absolutely destroyed IGN. Like you can go you can go look at the uh, like to dislike ratio on on the uh, last I checked it was like 200 likes and over 6000 dislikes. No <laughs> way. That's so bad. People, people just raked them over the coals. They just absolutely destroyed IGN like who are you getting to do your review like yeah, anyway, <laughs> yeah, just I wait. just thought it was funny. Wait, it was My just uncle wait, made IGN. this game, so 10 out of 10. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> My just uncle, wait, my IGN. uncle works for, for Disney. My uncle works for EA. My uncle works for Nintendo. 10 that out of 10. is Blizzard. My dad My Ooh. dad is Mr. Blizzard. <laughs> 10 <laughs> out of 10. get you banned. <laughs> yeah, but, but the actual topic I wanted to talk about was something interesting. Our good homeboys uh, responsible for Magic the Gathering, mm-hmm. Dungeons and Dragons, you know, good old Wizards of the Coast. Oh, yeah. Have officially announced Archetype Entertainment, the new game studio that they will be running. Hell and, yeah. And uh, they've announced kind of the leaders of it so far. So you've got James Ol- Olhen, Olhen, O-H-L-E-N, Olhen, I assume that's how you pronounce it, and Chad Robertson. Both of them come from BioWare. With James Ooh. being the senior Ooh. creative developer of Bioware, okay. he did Baldur's Gate, Dragon's Age, Neverwinter Nights, Star Wars: The Old Republic, oh, and a shoot. personal favorite of mine, Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. And then oh, Chad man. Robertson, God, what a repertoire! Was the head of live service for Anthem, yeah. which uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just Dolan might be carried. Uh, Brogan <laughs> literally <laughs> took the word, the sound out of my mouth, or was like, <laughs> eh. Uh, it's like literally, I, I felt like a village. Like the one aspect of Anthem that just destroyed the game. I just, I just felt like a villager right yeah. there. Like <laughs> that, that, that concerns me a, a touch. That concerns me a touch. Yeah, I definitely don't like that aspect of it. But James Olin seems to know what he's doing. I think both of them, from what I could tell, looking at it today, still work at Bioware. But I don't know mm-hmm. if things just haven't been updated. I don't know if they're doing like both at the same time. But at the moment. All they've announced is this multiplayer role-playing game set, uh, quote, set in an all-new science fiction universe that will send players on a story-driven epic where choices they will make have real consequences on how their story unfolds, end quote. So uh, are we ex- something in the works. That's are we expecting not, a, a Fable-esque yeah. kind of game? Potentially. I don't know. This, this, because, oh, man, Bioware really just went down the tank. Was it, it was it Bioware Activision? Didn't, didn't they partner up with Activision? I think they did. And that's yeah. when it really Pretty sure they did. Yeah. Yeah, well, well yeah. Blizzard, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. There seems to be a recurring theme here. Maybe freaking Activision. Yeah, so... I'm, I'm if it's I'm just stoked if they actually produce a high quality game. Well, here's like, the thing: Wizards of the Coast kicks ass. They do. Bioware pre Activision Bioware kicked ass. The only thing with the Wizards of the Coast is they really like money. That and that does concern true. me. Yeah, that does concern me. Like they do me. good quality things for a good price, like yeah. a good uh, high price. I feel Although like. they're like, hey. Hey, Anthem Life Service guy. <laughs> hey. 
Maybe wanna, that's because they didn't have to pay him too much. You want to give us some microtransactions, <laughs> sir? <laughs> Did Anthem have a lot of microtransactions? That's all it was. Really? Jesus. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was a it was a glorified microtransaction shop. The the ba- they they literally no joke put more effort into the microtransaction shop than the base game. I think I understand why Wizards went with them. Yeah, I think it adds up. We'll see. Yeah, we'll I still see. think it'll probably be good. But. It could be really cool. Uh, I'm glad that Wizards of the Coast is actually doing that. Um, do you know how long I have wanted a, a Magic the Gathering themed MMO? I think that would be the coolest thing ever. Oh, I think it would be, be so. You said it was an MMO, huh? Uh, no, well, this does. It says multi. That's not what this is. Game. I don't okay. think. I don't think that's what this is. Okay. I I for, I was like, did I miss out on something? Oh, is it this definitely a- it definitely will not be Magic the Gathering though. I can no. say that because yeah. it's totally separate from Magic and from D and D, which yeah. is fine. It's just, it's a completely new IP, which is fine. Yeah, it's totally fine. It's I mean, we need and more new Wizards IPs. Wizards has forty exactly k as well, right? I'm yeah, Warhammer. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, so I'm, it'll yeah, be a different. It'll be a different story from that as well. Which is fine, but like, because that's the thing is, I I trust them. IPs. I yeah. totally trust Wizards. We'll I just see. I pray it's not like science fiction. Money, like, money, really. No, it's science fiction. Running, money really. It, so it's not fantasy. Well, I mean, like, universe. I hope it's not like sci-fi. I like hope it's more like. Fiction? I hope it's more fantasy than sci-fi. Right. Well, yeah. it'll pro- hopefully it'll mix them. But or I mean, it's super. Only speculative. one way to find out. Yeah, I, well, I am glad. I, I think I think it's a smart move on their part. I oh think yeah. they can do some really cool things. I've been saying for a long time that Wizards of the Coast needs needs to get more into the gaming industry than well, the, the mean, video gaming industry. I mean, like, why would they though? They've dominated that field, so why not just yeah. keep dominating it rather than take why maybe an L? Yeah, that's the thing. You know, right? like, well, they might. I mean, let's be fair, like. Call it like for a while, mm-hmm. games like Call of Duty and like Halo were what that was what dominated the industry, and like the industry now is so open because we're getting yeah, games like true. Star Wars Battlefront 2 <laughs> and we're getting games like Anthem, and so now it's like the field's open, like the gates open. Like ho- if you're gonna hop in as now an indie time developer, for indie developers hop absolutely. in, oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's that's what we're getting. Ga- like games like Ten Ten and, and Titans, yeah, falling Untitled and Goose Game, Untitled Goose Game. Yeah, all these all these games are just like games that you would not have ever even heard of. Right. Uh, like the kings ten are years from ago. Their thrones and there's ample room for new people to fill the spots. So. Do you think it all just stems from like the good old capitalism and everything, Absolutely. where everyone's so oh. focused on the short term? It, it stems from greed. Hundred percent. Hey, bro. 100%. It all stems from greed. Like, the fall of all these major companies can be traced back to, to greed. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. is like certain companies are making good step backs, and they're actually producing good games again. I mean, I have I have high hopes for Halo, but I'm pretty sure Halo's in in the trash chute for me. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm worried about is Bethesda. I'm worried I'm, about Bethesda's future because Fallout 76 was so bad. Well, I think they'll. It's Bethesda. They they take time to make their games. They gotta let. They have like before. When is the next uh, Elder Scrolls game come out? But they don't even have a release date. Yeah. So they got. I'm hoping. We're probably going to talk about this later, but I'm hoping E3 this year we, we get more on Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6. I pray we get something for Elder Scrolls 6. I love I the Elder Scrolls game. It's been I know. I was just recently talking it's, about this. What, was so, it 2013 or was it 2011? So Morrowind came out in, I think it was 1998 or 1999. Uh, let's see. No, I think it was 2000. So Morrowind was 2000. Looks like uh, 2002. 2002. Oh, okay. Oblivion was 2006, so that was a four-year turnaround. Skyrim was 2011, so that was seven years. We're already nine years. That's, We're already nine years I'm, after Skyrim. You're right. I was like, was it? I kept. I always thought Skyrim came out 2013. Nope. But it it's 11, tw- 11, it's, 11, 11. I know. It's literally like way nine older. Years ago. It's so old. Coming up. But yet yeah, it holds up so well. That's that's the crazy thing is I I still sometimes will hop on my Skyrim accounts and oh, be yeah. like oh of course because it's just so much fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know with the mods and everything people say I don't even I don't even use the mods. I just I just I love the base them. vanilla game so much. And that being said, I also I I usually cut parts of the game like I'm, I'm all but like two of my accounts. I've made multiple because I'm 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 dumb like that, you know. I uh 
I will not activate the dragons. Because if you don't go to the Western Watchtower, they don't activate. <laughs> so I just totally don't do the main quest at all. So you don't have to worry about dragons? Ever? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, for, for most of my characters, like... But I, then my, you never get dragon souls, and you don't get yeah. shouts, and... Yeah, but let's be honest. My, like, to give you an idea of my characters that I built in Skyrim, the last one had level 100 shield. And that was oh, basically okay. level 100 shit, level 100 heavy armor. And I, the rule with my character is I couldn't use anything else besides my shield and my armor. Kind of so, want to play Skyrim now. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the thing is, is like, do you know how annoying it would be to run into a dragon and only be able to bash it? And that's if I get the chance to bash it before it, like, sends me flying in the sky. I mean, with giants, I had the ability to knock them down. True. But, like, yeah. So dragons, it's just they're they're pain. I never I never activate them. Dummy dragons. All right. Well, to wrap us up today, um, we'll just talk briefly about some of the new games that have been released in the last week. There's really only one of note that I know of, and it was Zombie Army Four. I was talking about Ten Ten. Well, that was a, that was uh, last week. Did we talk about it? We did talk about oh. Temtem. Yeah. Good we talked job. talked pretty extensively about Temtem. I remember us talking about it. I just wasn't sure if we talked about it actually being released. But you're right. I do remember. Because um, we talked about our favorite Pokemon. We did. T- yeah, we did. Um, Zombie Army 4 is really the only super notable game that came out. I mean, there was like a, like a motocross random game and stuff. But who, come on. Was it the Monster Energy Supercross? Yep, that's it. Bingo. Wait, what? Monster, Monster Energy. Energy. All right, Supercross. let's be honest. The yeah, that's a video game. Three. Yeah, that's game of the year right there. It has to be game. <laughs> has to be. <laughs> no, anyway, Zombie Army Four. It actually looked pretty good. Um, looks like there was also the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Tactics. Oh, I heard that one was terrible. Though. Though. I heard that was pretty. Terrible. I did hear about that one. I didn't look to what it was. Um, I heard the name. I was like, if you like zombies and not na- zombie Nazis and killing them, yeah, that's that's pretty much what Zombie Army Four is. Mm-hmm. Um, That's basically what all zombie army games are. It was. It was. I don't know if you ever played the Sniper Elite games. I have. Um, it was made by the same people on yep. the same engine as Sniper Elite Four. Oh, nice! And it actually it uses a lot of the same assets and the same. It's like set in the same place, uh, but instead of like, it's much more fast paced. So instead of like sneaking around and trying to like snipe people from far away, like you st- still can use snipers if you want, but it's more like running and gunning, and you're still in like Italy. If you I shoot the zombies going. in the nuts, does it give you that nice maybe. zooming cam? <laughs> maybe. That would be cool. That's what we need. Um, <laughs> it's like yeah, you're decay. just running around, like, <laughs> blowing up Nazi zombies. That's so, dope. If that's your thing, you, yeah, you got a game to play now. So. How much does it cost? Don't tell me it's a $60 game. Uh, Probably, but it might I, be 40 I, It's. I would only... It, even if I was into that, it'd have to be a $30 game for me to buy it. How much is it? How much? How much? I almost never buy games right when they come out. I will usually wait a couple months. Well, I always like to wait and see reviews. So, unless some games I hop on, like... like Some, yeah. There's, there's a few that I am like, I need this day one. But, like, 95% of games, unless you're Nintendo, they'll go on sale within, like, six months. So, I'll just wait and then buy them for, like, 50% or less. After a couple months, that's what I usually do. So yeah, that sounds fair. It does make reviewing games a little bit more difficult, though. Yeah, I haven't been doing as much game reviewing recently as I have in the past. So yeah, that's a okay. There's plenty of other things like Apex. Oh, that's something we can talk about. Apex Legends uh, season season four. four. I haven't even touched. It. I know they got a new uh, new a new um, character. Yeah, a new hero champion, whatever they call them. Yeah, I'm legend. Uh, I'm. I think I'm gonna hop on it. I haven't touched it yet, but I think I'm gonna have to reinstall. We might have to talk about it next week because I don't think any of us really know anything yeah, about sixty season dollars four. for zombie oh, yeah. well, That is so zombie whack. Right. That's good. But that might be the deluxe edition, but it might be. Yeah. But yeah, I'll be hopping on. I should be hopping on Apex after this with some of the boys. All right. So I'll I'll let you know. We'll we'll, we'll let you uh, we'll let you fill us in. I was pretty. I'm pretty good. At, uh, that's the thing is like I'm pretty good at battle royale games, but like they just become a little bit dry after. Yeah, no kidding. And Apex dried itself out like crazy. Yeah. So. All right. Anyway, that's going to be it uh, for this week. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other episodes. We do also have a YouTube channel where you can check out some awesome stuff. And at thegeekwave.com, our website, we have all the geeky goodness you could ever possibly want. Be sure to like us and follow us. We're on all your social medias and whatnot. Anyway, we will catch you guys next time. Geek out. There we go.